Are you ready to take your business to the next level and make the money you want so that you can create the impact you desire? Then you're in the right place. It's possible to run a successful business built around your life. Get ready for a little bit of tough love and a whole lot of strategy to grow your business without sacrificing your sanity. If you're ready to get out of your own way and step into the role of CEO, then let's go. I'm Amy Tra, and this is the Motivated CEO Podcast. Learning to trust your gut. It's one of those things that we hear so often. Yet really, are you, are you learning to trust your gut or are you just going off of what everyone else has told you that you should be doing, how you should be feeling, how you should be running your business? All of these mindset shifts are essential to growing a business that feels aligned, that feels good, that doesn't feel like a burden. And today's guest, Andrea Crisp, is an empowerment coach, and she is here to shed light on this topic that so many of us resonate with. We know we need to trust ourselves. We know we need to trust our gut. But how? How do we do that? So in today's episode, we are going to unpack it all. And with that being said, Andrea, welcome into the podcast. Thank you for having me, Amy. It's so good to be here. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited for this conversation. Just so many of the things that you say on social media and on your podcast, they just hit home. A lot of times, you know, you're saying something I'm like, is she talking directly to me? Like, it's just <laughs> kind of wild. So tell us just a little bit about yourself before we dive in and unpack this topic today. Well, I'm, first of all, I'm Canadian. I always like to like say that because oftentimes people will hear me speak and they're where is she from? So I'm actually a Northern Ontario. Um, I, I like to say that I'm a city girl living in a small town and I love um, doing my business. I actually have two of them. Not a lot of people know that. I am an empowerment coach as well as a vocal teacher. And so I've been doing that for many, many years. And I'm an, uh, an author, a podcast host, uh, I do all sorts of things, but I am also a dog mom. So that kind of, you know, wraps everything up in a little bow for me. But um, yeah, I'm just, that's just me. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. I did not know that about you, that you were really? also a vocal coach. No, yeah. I was today years old. So that's awesome. There you go. Love if you ever it. want to take singing lessons, let me know. Well, I mean, <laughs> I know my limits. We were just talking about this before we hit record about how I know I'm not a runner and I'm okay with not being a runner. <laughs> not sure how I ended up with a kid that's an awesome swimmer and an awesome runner. This mama has no endurance at all. So, but anyways, <laughs> let's dive into this topic, trusting your gut, really leaning into that. Why is that so gosh darn hard to do? I would have to say that it's been one of the things that I've struggled with the most. Same. And yet probably is one of my biggest assets when I use it correctly. So I think that when I first started my entrepreneurial journey, I just took the advice of everyone who had gone before me. And I'll tell you what. It was like listening to, you know, so many different people in the industry, trying to take their advice, trying to implement all of these things that they were offering. And they were really, really great things. Back in the day when I first started, there were, you know, all the big entrepreneurs, they were just kind of coming up in the ranks. And so I bought into all of these programs. I took everything that they said and tried to do it. And I did not grow my business. And so it was very deflating. And it really cost me a lot <laughs> in both financially and also emotionally because, and energetically, because I was just wasting so much time and money and energy. And then really just not trusting myself and not trusting that there was something that was leading and guiding me that I could like listen to. And so I think that it's important to be able to tap into your intuition, what that looks like for you. And, uh, and I know from experience that when I do like things open up for me, 
uh, when I don't, I feel low energy and burnt out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's something a lot of us can relate to. I mean, myself included, it is hard to trust your gut. But when you yeah. learn to lean into that and really leverage that, business gets to be fun. Business doesn't yeah. feel like a burden because now we're running our own race. You know, as cliche as it is, all of the strategy out there works. It's about figuring out what works it really for does. you. Uh, and, it's so true, Amy. Yes, it's yes. so true. Because, they're, you know, you look at or you listen to different coaches and they're talking about all of the things that, you know, they offer within their their particular offers. And it's easy to go, oh, I would love to do that. Oh, I would love to do that, too. And have that shiny object syndrome and think, oh, this coach is, you know, this is her sweet spot or his sweet spot. And you just kind of like going bouncing from one to the next to the next. But I think trusting yourself to either A, be led to the right person or the right program or knowing when it's time for you to step back completely and not be in someone's, you know, program or mastermind or, you know, whatever they're offering and just really, you know, do the work or listen for yourself. I think that's the important part, right? And then not thinking that you have to do what your biz bestie is doing as well and what, you know, everybody else is doing online, because that may not be the thing that you need to do right now. So yeah, yeah. that shiny object syndrome is real. Yeah. It is. It because, really is. Yeah. And it just, it's, it's heartbreaking to see so many people pivoting so often because they don't have that clarity because they're not taking the time to quiet the noise and listen to their gut, listen to their intuition. Now, in your opinion, are your like gut instincts and intuition, are those one in the same or are those two different things? Uh, okay. Well, I think maybe two different things. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'll jump to this. Are you familiar with human design? I am. Are your listeners? Okay. So I'm, I'm assuming that your listeners are as well. Mm -hmm. We've so, definitely done episodes on that okay. for sure. So like for me, when I understood my human design, I started to really look into like what were my open centers. Now I'm not a human design coach, so please, I'm not the expert. However, um, when I started to recognize that I had a open head, open ajna, open throat, and I was taking in everything and absorbing everything that people were saying, I started to understand why. I was falling into shiny object syndrome because that is how I'm wired. So it is very normal for me to listen to like, you write a book, I read your book. And I'm like, Oh, this, these principles are amazing. I have to do everything that Amy says. And then I read another coach's book. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. I've got to do everything this coach says. And then all of a sudden I'm in the shiny object syndrome. And I'm literally just absorbing everything that I'm seeing or hearing. Now, that's me personally because of how I'm wired. But then I started to recognize that my intuition was what leads me to really understand um, what decisions are good for me. And that is, you know, understanding how I am able to make decisions. Now, here's where... Our, I'm answering it like it's two things. Okay. So I really believe that there is our ability to tap into what is good for us. And then there's the ability for us or the capacity for us to tap into what I call God consciousness, our higher selves, and to really connect with something bigger than ourselves. And knowing that we can um, almost like bypass even us, really. So if I'm tapped into my intuition, I'm tapping into what is directly um, what I feel like is good for me. And then I'm also able to go into like that next level that God consciousness, that higher self and go, okay, well, what is like even, what am I being directed to do that I wouldn't even choose or that I might not see for myself right now because that's beyond even what I can my scope 
And so I think really understanding that, yes, we can tap into our intuition, but we can also tap into something even greater than us and see, well, what's on the horizon and how can we move into that? So I don't know if that answers it or yes. makes no, it, it, <laughs> it really confusing. does. It really does. It sheds a lot of light on that because we are all here for a higher purpose. And I think so often we forget that. We mm -hmm. forget that, okay, we, we can build a legacy. We can create so something so much bigger than us. If we lean into ourselves, if we take the time to really develop ourselves personally and do the inner work. And I know we hear this all the time, yeah. but this is really, truly important that you are mm -hmm. making the time to discover how do you work best? How do you function really having that self-awareness and that emotional intelligence? That's the key because when you know how you function, you can use that as a strength. You can use that yeah. as fuel to help you grow so that you can keep those blinders on and do things your way in a way that feels good, a way that's sustainable. Because yes. when we're doing what everybody else wants us to do, you can't sustain that for any no. length of time. That is a fast track to burnout. I've been there. I think we all have at one point or another, you know, we've bought into all these things, hoping for this quick transformation, but until you truly know yourself, that's an uphill battle that you're going to be fighting over and Absolutely. over and over. Yeah, no, that's good, Amy. Like, I, I really think that when we are doing that inner work, it's so important to understand how to know how to become self-aware. I think a lot of us are think that we're self-aware, but then we're not really even as self-aware as we probably could be. And we're just literally thinking, okay, what's, what's good for now? Yeah. And so not how do we tapping know? into, yeah. And tapping into that, that part of us, it's like, okay, well, how do I know what is good for me or what are, what am I bumping up against? What limitations am I buying into? Am I in a victim mindset? Am I blocking myself from what it is that I desire? Like all of those things and understanding or how am I feeling and knowing that our emotions play into this just as much as, as anything else does. So yeah. 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 That's a really important question to ask yourself. How am I feeling? And that's something I actually in include in my quarterly review when I block out time on my schedule to just focus mm -hmm. on my business. That is the number one question. How am I feeling? Because I yeah. think that a lot of times we're so busy in the hustle, we're busy in the busy that we forget to check in with ourselves and we yeah. don't ask ourselves, how am I feeling? Because a lot of times that's the missing piece that'll be the key to telling us, okay, wait, we're headed down the road at 90 miles an hour in the wrong direction because this yes. might not be getting us closer to the outcome that we really want. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. I love that you take that time, you know, that you set that side aside that time to do that. I don't know that as many entrepreneurs are really doing what the inner work requires of them and, you know, just kind of skating by yeah. on if I hustle or I do good work or, you know, and that will get you so far that yeah. that will build you a really good business but it might not build you a really good life. Yes. And isn't that what we're all striving for at the end of the day? Yeah. About mm -hmm. that time freedom, about that location freedom, the ability to live this one life, because right now this moment is the only thing that's guaranteed. So for me, that was a big eye opener back during the pandemic when the world shut down. It's like, do I want to continue on this path that I've been headed down because I thought I knew what I wanted to do when I was 18 years old? Mm -hmm. No, that was a huge wake up call that I realized this isn't the right path for me. And that's okay. Really mm -hmm. taking the time to pause and actually listen to clear those thoughts in my head because yeah, I was just busy being busy. I'm like, okay, well, I paid a lot of money for this degree. I went to school <laughs> for a long time for this piece of paper right. on the wall, you know, mm -hmm. but how many of us have, and we just accept this mediocre life when we are made for so much more. Yes. Now for you, when you were thinking about like shifting, shifting your career and changing, what was like the biggest thing that you had to move through? Fear. 
it was fear of what if, what if I don't succeed? What Mm -hmm. if, you know, everything falls apart. But then when I started having, okay, first of all, that awareness and then questioning those thoughts, that was Mm -hmm. really key. Questioning, okay, well, what happens if I quote unquote fail? Well, guess what? I still have a degree. I can go back to said field and find another job somewhere. There are always going to be ways to make money. Money is infinite. My life is not. I want Mm. to be able to live a life without regrets because I remember still, it was one of those like beautiful spring days at the height of the pandemic. My kids are playing without a care in the world. And it hit me like, I am missing this. I will never get back this moment in time, no matter how stable of a career I think that I have, like anything can happen. And I think that that was really the wake up call for so many of us to finally give ourselves permission to try and not have a life of, well, what would have happened if I would have gone for it? Yeah. And, you know, and to, you know, build something that you have that freedom in your life and an impact too. Right. Right. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then too, you know, those around us, I feel like sometimes us being courageous gives other people permission then to leaning and go after their dreams. I'm Mm -hmm. a mom. So I see it in my kids. They're like, wow, that's really cool. I mean, my daughter, she wrote me a little mother's day card and she's like, I am so proud of you for writing a book for going after your dreams. Like, Oh, that's like, they're always watching. Yes. You know, we're always in different capacities that we're inspiring people that we don't even realize the work we're doing has such a ripple effect that we don't even see happening, but is really right there right out in front of us. And I love that you're, you're mentioning, you know, your kids, because I think when you're trusting your intuition, not only, you know, I don't have children, but not only are you allowing yourself to lean into what is good for you and how you're wired and, and really moving into, into that, but you're also able to really uh, help other people to do the same thing. So whether it's, you know, your clients, whether it's your kids, whether it's both and really allowing them to step into how they want to live their lives. Because I think we all have to unpack that, you know, family of origin, what is it expected of us? And Mm -hmm. our little intuitive nudges are maybe leading us in a different direction. And our families might be like, what are you doing? That's not how we do it. And you are leading the way by, you know, saying, Hey, if this is what you love and this is what you want to do, then do it. Learn, learn about it now. Like your daughter, you said she's, you know, into running and doing all of this, you know, right now at, at a young age and knowing that she can trust herself to build these, um, really beautiful foundational pieces for her life is going to serve her, whether or not she goes into a trade, whether she becomes a teacher, whether she becomes an entrepreneur, doesn't really matter what she does. Right. Yeah. But breaking some of those generational cycles. I mean, that is something I had to work through because absolutely. (laughs) And I think it was others in my world trying to keep me safe. Because that's what oh, they were sure. taught. And yep. that's what their parents were taught. It's okay, you go to school, you get the degree, you get a job, you work, you retire, then you live. Yes. But it didn't make sense to me. I'm like, well, wait a minute, no. I want to live now. Yeah. Not when I'm <laughs> maybe 65 and hopefully I've saved up enough to retire. Oh, wait, no, we're going to bump the retirement age back and back and back. And it's like, why? Why are we yeah. doing this? So to be the one that's like, no, I'm going to break the cycle. And I know you're telling me like, Oh, are you sure this is a good idea? Because you're trying to keep me safe and that's okay. But yeah. once you realize that, okay, that's just their thoughts, their beliefs, the possibility and the opportunities are beautiful because they're everywhere around us. We just so often are focused on what we could lose versus everything that we could gain. Absolutely. Now I have a question for you. Have you mm-hmm. always been optimistic? Is that a natural thing in you? You know, I think I always have been somewhat optimistic, but I really feel like the process of becoming an entrepreneur and growing different businesses has really 
made me focus on the personal growth aspect. Yeah. Really focus on leaning into myself and having that self-awareness. And mm -hmm. it's really interesting for me now because I can take that step back and kind of view things from a different perspective. And I can identify exactly where a lot of these, these patterns and beliefs were rooted mm -hmm. because yeah. I took the time to do that. I'm like, Ooh, and I see it all the time. And I'll, I'll tell yeah. my husband, I'm like, Hey, I know exactly why this is going on. And you know, it's yeah. just really interesting when you can kind of remove yourself from that situation and have that, that clarity. Yeah. Oh. And you, you strike me as someone like when I just having known you for the short time that I do that you are, you have an ability to have that optimism that many maybe don't. Yeah. And you carry that, which I think is really beautiful. I just want to say that because I think oftentimes when, when people are struggling with like the fear thoughts or limiting beliefs, it, it feels very um, like they're living out um, being a victim. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like you have been able to transcend that and be like, okay, yeah, these are my limiting beliefs, but you're optimistically moving through them, which I think is beautiful, is so beautiful. I want to say like, it's really cool to see that because it's not very often you do see that. Thank and you. a lot of the times it's, it can be, people are in a lot of pain around it, mm -hmm. but you seem to like really be able to like go, okay, no, what's the bright side of this? And yeah. then move through it. Yeah. Now I mean, I'm not sure if that's how it actually works for you, but that's what it seems like. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't walk around with rose colored glasses on all day yeah. long. You know, it's not about like having a Pollyanna complex, but it's about, okay, in life, there's very few things that we can control, but yeah. I can control my attitude. I can control my perception of events. And if I'm trying to see every obstacle as to, you know what, what's the lesson in this? What is mm -hmm. this piece of adversity? What can I learn from this so that I can benefit from it? That right there has been a game changer. And it's taken practice because life's yeah. thrown me some major curveballs and that's okay. But looking back, that's where I've experienced that growth is through that adversity, through those challenges. Yes. And that right there is powerful because now these are skills that I can teach others. I can teach my kiddos so that yeah. hopefully they don't have to repeat the same things that I've gone through. So I think some of it is innate. And I think a lot of it too is just really practice, really yeah. having that self-awareness, taking the time to practice and build that resilience. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> now, what advice can you give to our listeners that are like, you know what, I, I know I need to do it. Mm -hmm. how can we learn to really lean into our intuition? And this is a loaded question. I mean, it's way yeah. easier to say than to do. So what well, advice I do think, you? I think I would say to anyone who's like in that place or like, I need to trust my intuition. It is to make that tough decision that might be right in front of you right now that you know you need to lean into but it feels really scary and you don't have a sure result. Mm -hmm. And it's not like, oh, if I do this, I'm going to guarantee the outcome. It's almost like maybe this might work and my intuition is leading me into that. Or it might even feel as though like they're, you know, this is the craziest thing ever. Why would I ever do this? But you're being given that nudge to do it, I would say lean into it and trust yourself and get quiet and then just do it. And then when once you've done it, here's the biggest thing I say. A lot of times we're we're waiting with bated breath afterwards, like, okay, now what? Right? right. And then wanting to reach back in and and pull it back and control it and go, okay, well, you know, my ego is at play now. My ego wants to get in and control and make things happen and that's when you want to detach from the outcome and say, okay, I trust myself enough and I trust God consciousness enough to really let it go, release it and detach from the outcome. And you might have to do that a few times over and get the experience of doing that and how it feels for it to feel less clunky because it, it probably is going to feel a bit clunky when you first start doing it. It's yeah. a skill. 
It's a yeah. skill that you can get better at. It just yeah. takes practice. Yes. Andrea, thank you so, so much for taking time to pour into Absolutely. listeners today. Where can we learn more about you? How can we get into your world? Tell us all the things. Well, you can find me on Instagram at Andrea Chris Coach, or you can find me on the Courage Cast, which is the podcast that I have. I'm an OG. We were talking about that OG podcaster. You can find me over there. And uh, I'd love to connect with anyone who is listening today. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing such great takeaways. And until next time, cheers to making the money you want so you can create the impact you desire. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 